Welcome back to TTC and welcome to a new video series and collaboration with a fellow YouTuber. Today and on subsequent videos, if you guys want to see them, we're diving into cordless leaf blowers and the specs they slap on the side of these things versus actual real life miles per hour and CFM as well as how that translates to real life with the help of our friend Jim over at Philly Fix because in LA, well, we don't have a lot of leaves to be blowing around. That's going to include these five leaf blowers that range in price from $70 as tested to $220 with specs that range even wider from online only brands, power tool companies, to OPE only highish dollar dedicated platforms. Our bread and butter over here at TTC is usually foot pounds, those long sought after beans that brands love to advertise as sky high, but only sometimes actually reach for the stars as we found out. Recently we've expanded into air hammer beans, which had no measurements before we came along, and also measuring light lumens, which also often carry some pie-in-the-sky numbers. Leaf blowers and the brands that make them are no different in that each needs to put out a comparatively impressive spec on the box to one-up their competition and make that price they're asking for appear reasonable. However, unlike impact wrenches with foot-pounds that at least have some relationship with you tightening bolts and such in your real life, leaf blowers carry two main stats that have a very loose relationship with what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Velocity and sometimes hundreds of miles per hour of air coming out the end of the tool and volume of air in cubic feet per minute. Cordless leaf blowers advertise as high as 208 miles per hour and 730 CFM of volume on these products, with many of them often in the 100 to 130 miles per hour and 400 CFM range on average. So what makes those with specs nearly double that so much better? Is it price, voltage, poor run times or overeager marketing departments with a thinner grasp of reality. And assuming those specs do live up to the marketing, does that even translate into better performance for you and less time spent on the weekend doing chores? Let's find out by starting in price and spec first with the Sunjo. Sunjo is definitely an example of a budget level outdoor power equipment brand, if there ever was one. Sunjo being the summer and fall time line of the maybe more known Snowjo line, which makes their odd white battery here make a little bit more sense. That 24 volt battery being only two amp hours or 43 watt hours total at its base voltage, which we'll be using to compare these tools with today. But at $70 all in with charger, you can't be too unhappy about it. That also keeps the weight down at only 3.8 pounds ready to blow, which means it will get dinged less on our new rank chart. 3.8 pounds means it starts with negative 38. It's smaller battery with 48 watt hours being divided by four in this column, affording it an additional 11 points. You can also now see this one's performance specs. The Sunjo advertises 100 miles per hour and 280 CFM. To measure that, we'll be using a $370 NIST certified Digisense 20250-13 scientific instrument called a pitot tube that you might often have seen on the front of jet aircrafts or Formula One cars to measure the same sort of thing we're going to be doing today, which is high velocity or airflow. All of the blowers and equipment in today's video were purchased by us and fully fixed as usual. TTC doesn't test anything from brands or accept product placements. Visit ours or Jim's T-Store below to support that effort. Now, if you were thinking we'd be using an airspeed anometer with fan blades, that's not going to cut it for the velocities and accuracy we'll need. And hot wire gauges, well, take a look at this clip. Pitot tubes have been around for a very long time. They've been used in aircraft and various um, other applications, including steam boilers. It is the instrument of choice. I know some of you will use a hot wire anemometer. And if you work for me and you put a hot wire anemometer into the duct, I'll break your fingers. Yeah, so a pitot tube is just what we need, and if it works for F1, I think it can work for TTC. Originally, we had a setup here with a nice acrylic tube with cutouts and a specific diameter to measure airflow that we calculated would probably be best. But after some testing, we found that the numbers we saw closest to what the brands advertised were coming right out the end of the blowers and were more repeatable too, which usually means cleaner and better data. So without further ado, here's the air velocity of the Sunjo. So without the front nozzle, it's seeing about 78 miles per hour and calibrated for its 2.6 inch diameter exit, we're about 250, 252 CFM. With that extra front nozzle, about 84, 85 miles per hour. And now with a 2.32 inch exit, we're seeing a lower 
220, 219, 218. We're calling that 219 CFM. So it's best configuration for scoring points and for use on leaves, according to Philly Fix, would be with the nozzle for 85 miles per hour and 219 CFM, which comes out to 170 and 73 points when you times two for the miles per hour and divided by three for CFM like we're doing here. And we've weighted all this data based on everything we've compiled for this episode and more. So that affords it 85 and 78% of its claims. Not great. And that's in these two columns that together can max out at 200 or 200% for these two ratings. So far, not too close to those box figures. So what does that kind of performance look like when you put it to use? According to Philly Fix's test of moving a trash bin worth of leaves from 10 feet away to a eight foot square, about two minutes and 45 seconds, which we don't have a basis to compare just yet to, but let's just say it feels like quite a while. All while enjoying about 88 decibels from the old Sunjo, which will add to its score a bit later. Our next blower that can be had for a bargain is the Ryobi P2190, which sells for $70 bare or $99 as a kit with a small battery. And well, with that small battery, Ryobi pretty much matches the real life performance of the two minute and 45 second Sunjo with two minutes and 38 seconds. But a good reason to buy a power tool company brand, heck even the only reason for a model like this is likely you already own a battery and charger. And since offering many battery sizes you might already own is the main draw for a blower like this, it should enjoy the benefit if there is one of a large battery. And the largest battery we own is luckily the nine amp hour, which totals a huge 162 watt hours. And as Jim shows, this had a dramatic improvement in this blower's test time from 238 down to one minute and 39 seconds, a full minute less on a two minute task. So that's how we'll be testing it today to give it its best shot. Of course, that means it's now starting at a much heavier 5.9 pounds, so negative 59 points, and won't be helping it here with its new price, as the 9 amp hour included bumps this all the way up to $209 as tested. But stay tuned for the runtime test here, where it's obviously going to be benefiting, and over here as well with gem scores, which are heavily weighted based on that leaf test time. So the Ryobi advertises similar specs to the Sunjo at 90 miles per hour, and 200 CFM. Let's take a look. That nozzle on the Ryobi oddly is the same diameter as the main tube, so it simply extends it. So no increase in mile per hour or decrease in CFM there. The Ryobi sees 80, 83, 82 miles per hour, we'll call that 83, and 214, 217, 216, we'll call that 215 CFM. 83 miles per hour and 215 CFM makes for 166 and 72 points and pretty close to his claim, 94% for velocity, and actually that's like 108% for CFM, but these two do cap out at 200, otherwise a small like hand blower that makes 200% of its mile per hour claim could top this whole list. So it makes up for 6% of that lost here. It's about one decibel quieter, which on a logarithmic scale is like a whole lot quieter, but here is worth four points, so 52 points rather than 48. Stay tuned for the runtime though, things get pretty spicy there for this one. On our next blower in order of spec is the Makita XBU03SM1, which can be found for $199 as a kit, but we're bringing it up to 210 as tested because it performed best today with a five amp hour pack. The Makita advertises 116 miles per hour and 459 CFM, a bit of a step up in velocity and a whole bunch of a step up in CFM at 459 versus the 200 to 220 we've been seeing so far, at least if it can reach those numbers. It's starting out with a larger point deficit due to 6.2 pounds weight, even over the Ryobi with a much larger battery. So let's see it. This is the Makita, which is seeing 97 and a half, 96, 97.1. We're calling that 97 miles per hour. And for CFM calibrated to its 3.08 inch inside diameter on the nozzle, that's 446, 443, 440, 444. We'll call that 444 CFM. Pretty good on the CFM. That makes for 194 and 148 points, and 84% and 97% of the CFM being much closer to the specs in their mile per hour rating here. It's also about 89 decibels, which to my ears felt a bit loud, making it 44 points here. And for Jim, all this performance was good enough to consolidate the leaves in one minute and 23 seconds. Pretty good. All right, time for some big dogs though. The OPE dedicated tools from Ego and Greenworks with some serious performance claims. The Ego LB5302, which really isn't all that expensive at $179 as a kit with a 2.5 amp hour, 56 volt battery. 
less than the Makita as a kit, assuming you didn't already have Makita batteries already, but at 110 miles per hour and more specifically 530 CFM, she's claiming to bring a lot more air. And while not the most powerful Ego blower in their fleet, make your recommendation for your favorite below, it's the best selling full size blower on all of Amazon. And also compares among their offering quite close to our next competitor, the Greenworks BL80B210, which is pretty much at the tippy top of Greenworks product line, save for one of their $350 models. This one being $199 and often goes for the same price as this Ego as we bought it, going blow for blow for those Amazon sales clicks. The Greenworks claims less CFM at 500, but quite a bit more velocity, 150 miles per hour. Both of these have big chonker batteries, 144 and 140 watt hours with the two amp hour 80 volt Greenworks being larger than a literal brick. But that helps them and maybe hurts them on this rank chart. Helps them here with maybe some more watt hour points and maybe helps them here with runtime. We'll see soon. But hurts them both here starting with much higher points deficits due to weight. But they should bring the beans to make up for it, right? Both of these tools advertise their figures in turbo mode. So that's what we'll be ultimately comparing their specs against. But here's the non-turbo mode for the Ego first, in case you're curious. So it's seeing 85, 84 miles per hour, as high as 86. And with CFM, that's going to be 424, 15, 416 or so. If you remember, that's essentially sort of what the Makita was always making. And the Makita even being a little bit more in mile per hour in CFM. Jim found that their performance, the Makita versus the Ego in standard high mode, to be quite close, with the Makita finishing even the test 10 seconds sooner. So this data so far being somewhat representative of what you'd see in real life. But what about those 110 miles per hour, 530 CFM claims? Let's see that turbo. That 416 CFM jumps up real quick to 534, 531, 527, 530, and settling in about 526 or so. And miles per hour is 107, 108. We'll give it the 108 it's seeing here. Ego says this model can make 110, 530. We saw 108, 526. I mean, to be honest, if TTC was rating this tool, we likely would have stamped the exact numbers Ego did on this box on both figures, not something that happens on this channel too often. So that's good news and means you may be able to compare models within Ego's line pretty well on paper. But how does it compare against other brands, are they playing by the same rules? Time to see the Greenworks with their 500 CFM and huge 150 mile per hour numbers. So out of turbo mode, we're seeing 104 miles per hour. That's so awesome. And calibrated for 2.54 inch exit, it's only about 317 CFM. So far, not a whole lot. All right, turbo time then. That 317 becomes only 376, 375, 374. And velocity is looking like 120, definitely more miles per hour than the Ego, but not no 150 miles per hour, and certainly not 500 CFM. The Ego is getting pretty much full marks here, where the green work, simply because of their marketing claims, is going to get dinged in the form of 80% for velocity and only 75% of their air volume versus what they advertise. But all those specs do you no good if the blower dies in two minutes or its performance halfway through its runtime isn't enough to move any dog dookie. We're gonna hop right into it. Here's every blower's mile per hour in their highest setting across their runtime. Despite the Sunjo and Ego being very different performance wise, they both conk out quite early at 10 minutes. Yes, 10 minutes, but not far behind that. We have the Makita at 11 minutes and then the Greenworks at 13 and a half, almost 14 minutes. That slightly larger battery on the Greenworks is helping, but putting out lower than its advertised figures is probably helping extend its runtime as well. The Ryobi doesn't stop here though, like we're showing. Here's some context for just how long it lasted with that big Chungus 9 amp hour HP battery. So yeah, basically forever compared to its competition. That smaller 18 volt brushless motor just really enjoys a larger battery for performance and runtime. We ran it another time just to be sure and it was long enough of a runtime to vibrate its own nozzle off. This battery adds a whole lot to its as tested price, but it represents the only advantage really this tool has over the others today and that's runtime. In case you're wondering, you do get similar performance with a decent HP or high performance 4 amp hour battery with this tool if you want less weight and a little less than half the runtime. Just skip the tiny battery though, which can't really achieve either. Their standard 4 amp hour black battery is also not very great. 
And I know, I know, I can hear it already, but TTC, you're doing it all wrong. Turbo modes are only once in a while on these tools. In case you're curious, here's what the performance runtime of the Ego and Greenworks looks like in a standard high mode. So the Ego is going to pick up about three minutes up to 13 minutes on this test, and Greenworks goes from about 13, 14 minutes to 17 minutes. Not exactly a night and day scenario, keeping in mind here that the Ryobi goes on to reach 63 minutes, and also that the Ego is pumping out about twice the CFM as the Ryobi is on this chart. So when you do their runtime minutes times two, that makes for their scores here, the Ryobi taking somewhat of an obvious advantage there. Then their median mile per hour is listed here, which is halfway through their run, what kind of velocity you're actually seeing. With all those figures now filled in, we can sort of do their performance versus price, which is just the sum of all of these points each gain so far versus its price times 25. The Sunjo is obviously a value proposition, a way to own a cordless leaf blower on a budget. It gets 186 points because it's as tested price is only $70. And even if the rest of the figures are not earth shattering, that's pretty good. The Ryobi becomes quite expensive indeed with that pricey nine amp hour battery, but it still does do best with it, earning 81 points here, still not terrible. The Makita though, that's pricey if you don't already own the batteries and chargers. You'll have to factor that in for yourself. It gets 77 points. A six amp hour Makita battery, their largest that they offer in LXT, would have done slightly better here, but at $150 a piece just isn't worth that one amp hour increase. Then the Ego earns 100 and the Greenworks 91 at their prices as purchased. Now for the Philly scores. These are out of 300 and assigned by Jim from him using each of these blowers. And it was also weighted heavily based on the amount of time it took to complete his leaf test. Jim gave the Sunjo a measly 180, the Ryobi a bit higher at 200, the Makita 235, and the Ego 250 with the Greenworks at 260. After all, he had no idea about how close these tools came to their marketing claims. He's just using them like you would be, that longer nozzle of the Greenworks being closer to the ground with higher miles per hour, which we think seems to close the gap compared to CFM here. So if you had to pick one, maybe favor a miles per hour, but you can't be lacking totally in either. Check out his video for more details on what he liked and didn't like about each. So after all that, that totals 886, 954, 957, pretty close from the Makita, 1068, and 1003, putting the Ego into first, the Greenworks into second, followed by the Makita, Ryobi, and Sunjo when you consider all of these factors. Both of these blowers were tested in turbo, which let's face it, is just their high setting with a button to enter it rather than fully pushing down on that switch. Their regular trigger does about 80%, and then the button unlocks the rest. In order to reach their advertised figures, or not even in this case, you need to push that button for them to get to enjoy all the points that they've got over here. That hurts them over here when we're talking about runtime and decibels, but really if you're looking for a standard high, I think a less OPE focused tool like the Makita can do all of that and better, or perhaps even a cheaper model in the future if we find that out. If you have a suggestion, leave it below. As usual on this channel, we find some brands are pretty transparent about their specs, at least so far, and others, maybe with the knowledge that it's unlikely anyone out there is gonna be able to call them on it, might be fudging the numbers a little bit or maybe testing them in some less realistic way that we can't replicate. Either way, I hope with the mixture of data that we were able to measure along with real world use from Jim, we were able to provide you with a way to Make a decision for yourself on these few tools we showed today and meter that knowledge with your own demands, whether it be runtime, battery platform you are already invested in, or outright performance. I appreciate you joining us for this all new testing series. Sorry if this one was a long one. If we do more, they can of course be shorter without the need to explain our whole testing setup. If you'd like to see more, let us know. Click some buttons below to tell YouTube as much. Make sure to check out Philly Fix's video and thank you for watching.